capital R is scored very efficiently in in circuit lab. Okay, so there is a concept called as grid search CV. Okay, so this one is going to be useful, very useful when we know gradient descent algorithm and hyperparameter hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so till till Friday. We looked into how to build a model, how to select a model using cross validation techniques or resampling techniques. Uh, resampling techniques. We'll, we have learned how to you know check whether model is working good or not using train set only. Without touching test set, we are splitting train set into train and cross validation and doing that uh, whatever. Right. So if you look at that code. Why grid set CV? I am actually trying to explain why grid set code model radiation. It is basically okay. So if you look at this code, what I did cross validation I did and then I took means of them means of the train score and means of the test score and looked at them and they are close and uh, I, I got to know that you know the model is working good. Okay. So you know while doing this right if we have to if I have to check check on the second degree polynomial third degree polynomial fourth degree polynomial what I did, I actually wrote a loop and all that here, right? In a range, I have taken the polynomial features and then passed first degree, second degree, third degree. Each time I calculated cross validation and took means and then did a graph and you know, all that I did, right? If there is a tool that can do all this and let me know the best model, that would be good, right? So the tool should be like, you know, you pass the X train, Y train, and the model, and specify the cross validation. It will automatically tell you and, and the degrees, you know, different degrees. Okay, it will automatically tell you which degree polynomial is working good. No, it does. You know, basically, do we need to do this graph to understand whether you now which model is working good, third degree or second degree or fourth degree? Do we need to definitely do do this model, or is there a, is there another way? If we know numbers. Is there another way? Guys, that's a question. Do we need to definitely do this uh, learning curve or uh, is there a way we can know if we know numbers? If we know numbers in the sense uh, train error and test error. Basically cross validation error, sorry. Did you get my question? Yeah, yes sir. Uh, see, from the graph, what we are trying to do is wherever the mean absolute error is the lowest, and the uh, difference yes. between uh, train and uh, uh, train set value and uh, testage value is uh, least, that's what we want to find and use it as a best model. So, if there is a mechanism somehow which will, <coughs> which will give us lowest <coughs> mean absolute error, and the diff, diff between uh, train set and test set is lowest, uh, I think that's where. Uh, Yes, sir. We don't need sir. to do all this looping and all. That's the logic. That's the logic. Good, sir. So without doing this graph, we can actually find out. We need to see where train and test errors are low, and then the gap between them is low, right? Then gap between them is minimal. So that you know, if you can write some code and which does that, right? This looping and all that, that is grid set CV. This grid set CV is a class in. Uh, Scikit-learn, which actually does that. Okay, am I recording? Yes. In grid, in in uh, Scikit-learn, somebody wrote this code, right? And they were, you know, whatever Giri said, the logic, right? The same logic was implemented in there. So when you pass the different degrees, first degree, second degree, third degree, and specify the cross validation and pass these classes, pass these values, right? That grid set CV will run it. So let me show you that. So I have taken all the 
Uh, no sir, necessary. before before we go there, just a question, sir. Uh, yeah. Here uh, in the current cell, what you are highlighting in the screen, uh, CV three we mentioned. So, uh, do do we need to really mention it uh, here? Because in the loop, we are trying to find out where it is the lowest and all. Why do we need to mention CV three? CV equal to three. See here, we actually did not do a linear regression model with second degree, third degree. We did cross validation. Oh. K-fold cross validation. That that's where we are specifying CV is equal to three. If it is just a model, right? LR that fit we would have done. Okay. Did I answer your question? Uh, still not clear. Why do uh -huh. why do we need to specify CV equal to three here? That I. Is not clear yet. So. See, uh, this cross validation method. Let us look into it. I I may not have got your question clearly, and I am not. I may not be answering it properly. But let us look at this. Okay, I will come to. I come back to your question. See this here. Cross validation. Receive. By default, five fold will be done. By de by default, CV is equal to five. Okay. If you don't specify CV is equal to three, it will take five and do five fold, five fold cross validation. Okay. If I am not doing cross validation, what I would have done is, I would have done. Um, where is the model? I think in the LR model, right? LR underscore model model that fit, right? Three X. I would have done this, okay. I would have done this, but you know, I would have got you no know, train error. Right? There is no test error here, right? If you do linear regression, we would have predicted here, right? LR dot predict of train x comma. I would have called, you know, the maybe mean root mean squared error or you know mean squared error. Scikit-learn so sk that okay. and then I would have captured that into one variable, one list, maybe this list. Maybe like that I would have done. Okay. But if I if I do the model dot fit and then you know I actually did this right, I'm getting only one curve. I don't know whether it is going to work on the test set or not. So to accommodate that right, I used cross val score. That method is giving me two sets of scores, right? By splitting my train set into train and uh, cross validation and doing all that is needed, right? Before going and touching the test test set, we are trying to see whether model works well or not, right? <laughs> So that that is accommodated by cross val score, cross validation method, and the CV is equal to three. We have to give right some number. We have to give. If you don't give anything, five will be taken. Did I answer your question around whatever? Yeah, it is clear that why we are doing cross validation. I have no doubt, sir. It's clear. Uh, okay. uh, there is no ambiguity. Uh, why is CV equal to number three? Oh, what, what is the reason for why using not number five, three? Why not five? Why not ten? Why not twenty? Ah, right? yeah. That's my question, sir. Yeah. You see, I, I, you know, if you run this code, if I put 20 here, if your machine is slow, if you run this right, it will take one hour, right? Maybe oh, okay. 20 oh. minutes or 10 minutes. You oh. may get frustrated and cancel it. If oh. I put three here, it will quickly run and come out. And maybe, you know, when once you understand, right, you can actually play with it. Oh. Right? Sure. It is for you, your like students' convenience. I just kept small number. Okay. Okay, sir. So that's what I showed you here, right? Why 20 or which number to choose? This is the answer. And maybe you're asking which number to choose. Huh? Yeah. Right? If you take three here, the gap between trainer and cross validation error was high. If you took five, it is reducing, right? By 20, right? It actually reduced a lot, and the gap between train set and test set errors are low. That means <clears throat> you gave more data to training set. You gave more data to training set, and uh, you know the 
model started behaving well on the unseen data or the, or the test set. Not, not unseen, basically, seen cross validation data set. Right? So, more the CV, better the model training. Why? Because when you do more splits, the small split, split goes into testing, the cross validation, and 19 splits go into training. Got it? Okay. Sir. Right. I think uh, we have covered most of it. I think yes. you had, you know, uh, an indirect question, but I tried to see you know, whether I can answer it completely. So That's more good. CV, yeah, more CV, more you know, better the model will be. More CV, better better the model will be. You know, <clears throat> when data is huge, it doesn't matter whether you take CV three, four, five. It doesn't matter. When data is less, right? That's when you know you need to play with this number and right. If you if you train this model with CV twenty and capture the best, right? We'll uh, anyway, you know, in the in the grid set CV, we'll capture the best model. Right? So out of all those uh, different combinations, it will actually find. So here, that's okay. Here, right now, when we use when we are we want to do cross validation. We want to do cross validation on each set of parameters, set of hyperparameters. I would say the degrees of the polynomial, polynomial is hyperparameter. We call it as thetas in the linear equation. The, hyper, the hypothesis function are called as parameters. In the linear regression algorithm, the hypothesis function is theta zero plus theta one x one plus and so on theta and x n, right? In those, in that equation, the thetas are called as parameters of the model. But you know the numbers are the you know the, the ones which actually change the way the model works are called as hyperparameters. So these hyperparameters, like different hyperparameters, we can check. We don't know whether it is going to work with one first degree polynomial, second degree polynomial, third degree, fourth degree, tenth degree, fiftieth degree. We don't know. So if we have to check that, we need to do this kind of coding. To avoid this kind of coding, we are actually learning a technique called as grid set CV. Okay. So I can move on, I think, you know, if you have questions, right, you can start. So this, you know, why grid set CV we are understanding. So I imported all the necessary modules here. And then I think I need to take out one of these. I loaded the data. I splitted the data. Kept the test set aside. Now I have, you know, copied and pasted all that. coming very slowly, sir. Uh, your screen is coming slowly, so the, when you are talking about by referring to something, by the time screen is not loading. At least for me, it's not loading. I don't know about. Yeah, that. for me also there is some lagging. Yeah, some lag is there. Yeah, I am on mobile net. I am in the hometown. So sure, sure, sure. If this week, right? You know, please bear with me. I will be back on Sunday. So from next sure. week, will not have. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll go a little slow. Oh. That's yeah. so we are splitting the data right? and then I am doing the pre-processing here, right? Data pre-processing. We already did pre-processing on this particular data set. I took the same data set I'm trying to explain, you know, maybe maybe you know three, four days, maybe, maybe three, maybe one more week. I, I'm going to use this data set only because we already did. The pre-processing that is that is being used in in real time also. Once you do pre-processing, right, that will be used in 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 to apply different algorithms. So this, whatever we are showing here is what you do in real time. Okay, many people will have a question. What am I going to do? In, whatever we do here is what we do in real time. There is no other way. There is no other way to do. Okay, this is the best way. Whatever we are we are seeing here is the best way. Okay, so I'm using the same code here. The same way we'll actually do it. Do it. Maybe we'll create a class in Python. We'll create a class, and in that class we'll put different methods to clean up, and maybe we'll instantiate that class and call the methods to do this cleanup. Code modularization. Once you know coding, right? Modularization is not a big deal. Okay. So I took all those, you know, designation, all the categorical columns and those allowed values. Right, allowed values in designation, allowed values in qualification, allowed values in degrees, so that I can do one heart and label encoding. Okay, so here I am doing 
I, I, I wrote a method to do cat like a label and query. See this? I converted a column, the categorical column, into categorical, and then set cat dot quotes and updated the column itself. The original column itself I updated. So I converted all these into numbers. All these into them, provided they have clear, clear relationship with the target variable. Okay, clear, you know, solid relationship with the target variable. What is target variable here? Salary. Okay, we are trying to predict salary. So I took all the other understandings, right? Modes and means and all that, kept them aside. Now I am doing a transformation. This is all fit activity, right? This is transformational activity. In in a layman's terminology, I'm actually showing. You now in future we'll talk about fit transform a little more. So I have taken the data and split that into X, Y. And now I took a pipeline and a grid set series. Let us try to understand what is pipeline. Pipeline means a sequence of pre-processing steps. Okay. So in data pre data warehousing techniques or data warehousing theory, they call it as a sequence of pre-processing techniques as called as a pipeline. So when you are doing a, the pre-processing, right? There is an order, right? First, you actually try to collect all the, you know, distinct uh, values from the this thing and uh, put it in a dictionary, and then you try to, you know, clean up one, 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 one after the other, or you find values and, you know, clean up one after the other. So there is a sequence of steps. You can actually put all those steps into this pipeline class. Okay. So in this pipeline, I did. Polynomial features and linear regression. What is polynomial features? I know in, 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 if you look at this code, what I'm doing here? I am converting the data set into polynomial first. One, two, three, four, right? I took one, converted, and then, you know, uh, fit transform is the conversion, and then I built a model, right? Linear regression. Again, second degree, Converted, then built a model. Third degree, converted, built a model. Sequence of steps they are. This is pre processing step, this is model building step. Pre processing step, model building step, right? So I can actually put them in a pipeline. So this class, this, this pipeline class actually gives us a flexibility to add many, you know, many sequence of steps. I actually showed only two here. You can add many sequence. So you can create custom transformers also. I'll actually show you. Uh, maybe I took it to it out, I think, custom transformers. Okay, I'll show custom transformers. So this is a predefined transformer. No? When I say pre-built trans transformer, predefined transformer, scikit-learn gave us, right? This polynomial features class, scikit-learn gave us. And we have added that as a one step. We call them as steps. The first step, and this is second step, right? We added them as steps, but we can create our own custom transformer also, right? If, if tomorrow maybe I'll I'll show you one, okay? So we can create our own custom transformer. Here we manually applied these uh, these uh, pre-processing steps, but we can create a class and then use that as a Pre-processing step. What is the use of it? On train set and on test set, right? These are this is all the code we are applying on train set. The same code we are applying on test set, right? We can modularize this code. When I say modularize, create that as a function or a class and use it in the pipeline. Okay. Now this pipeline concept and grid sets pipeline concept. Even if you don't understand, that's fine. I'm actually trying to explain you in real time how you do code modularization. Okay, in real time, how do you how do you do code modularization? So this code is repeated. This code is written here and written here, and the data sets are different. You can create them as functions also, which takes a, a data frame and does the pre-processing, or you can convert into a transformer like this and put it into Put it here, like you know, another step prep, I would say. Okay. And then the data set, you know, the maybe 
salary sal data prep right so if you call that like that right it will actually do it will actually do the fit transform on this and then do the transformations okay so we can do that but you know we are using pre pre built transformer and you know pre built uh, linear regression so we kept these two in a pipeline and you know instead of calling the linear regression right in the cv what we did we call linear regression model and passing the train and test instead of calling the instead of calling the linear regression i am calling poly linear regression pipeline right and <coughs> we'll talk about <coughs> param grid in a moment grid set cv takes the pipeline and it can take the class also it can take individual algorithm also but we are passing pipeline because we packaged everything here did you get this point what what did we packaged polynomial conversion and a linear regression algorithm both we packaged and we are passing that package as the you know as a variable to the grid set cv what it will do it will actually take this grid param grid is a dictionary with key and value what is this key this polynomial features you know in this pipeline we have polynomial features one variable okay and then this polynomial features we were actually passing degree right if you see this here see this degree is a parameter right in polynomial features degree is a parameter do you see that screen change not no, yet sir screen did not change but we can visualize yeah now it changed right so the in the polynomial features right degree is equal to d this is what you are doing right so degree is a hyper parameter degree is a parameter for the polynomial features class so in grid set cv in grid set cv screen change right yep yep Yeah. In the pipeline, we have two variables, two objects basically. Polynomial features is one object. LR linear regression is another object. In the polynomial features, we have degree as a parameter. So we said underscore underscore. If you want to pass value to the parameters of classes which are present in pipeline, you should be using the variable name underscore underscore. and the parameter name and pass the distinct value different values you want to pass it to why why are you actually passing grid set cv what it is doing it is actually taking the first value and calling this pipeline when you when it calls the pipeline right the polynomial features will get created linear regression algorithm will get created and three cross validations will be done okay this whole code that i am going back to the old file this whole code i don't know whether it is replaced or not the for loop the d right the polynomial features the linear regression model cross validation right this whole thing is done in a single shot you can see the screen right this whole thing this whole thing is done in a single shot right grid set cv takes the pipeline and passes the param grid and does the cross validation looks at the score right for what for first degree for second degree for third degree for fourth degree without writing any loop in a single shot i actually passed all the parameters this is just the beginning right in your real time you will have param grid with maybe you know 5 6 parameters here and then pipeline with maybe 5 6 classes there when you do grid set cv right it will take all the combinations if you have one more parameter suppose that there is one, one more you know there is a parameter called as learning rate okay lr underscore uh, so learning rate is a hyper parameter suppose that learning rate is a parameter 
director for Dinari Krishnal Gar. L is the variable name. Underscore underscore the you know the parameter name colon right for learning rate you need to pass 0 0.01 right 0, 0.0 I did not explain what is learning rate but you know in future we'll see you know, maybe in two days or three days we'll see that's very important thing so if you want to pass values like this right what it will do is it will take one point one point zero one do the grid set CV. What grid set CV will do? It will create the linear regression and do cross validation. Look at the scores and keep them aside. Again, 1, 0 0.0, 0 0.11. Again, do the cross validation. Look at the scores. Take the average and keep that, keep it aside. Again, 1, 0 0.001. Look at the average, right? Like that. 4 into 4, 8 iterations it will do. 8 iterations it will do and Ultimately, it will find the best model also. As Giri said, right, the logic, it will actually do all the models, take the averages, keep them aside. It will look at the train score and cross validation score, which is low, and the gap between them is low, minimum. This grid set CV will look at that and give you the best model. See this best estimator. Grid set dot best estimator is the estimator which works best. See the third degree. Paul Nam is working good. That's what it said. Right? Fit. Right? This fit. Grid search dot fit. Instead of doing linear regression dot fit, we are doing grid search dot fit, which will actually call fit transform on polynomial, the, the polynomial features class, and fit on the uh, linear regression class. Got it? Do you remember? On the polynomial features on the train set, we are doing fit transform. See this? So here uh, I have one question. The cross validation we are passing that uh, linear model, uh, linear regression, and as well as like uh, you know train set and test set, uh, right? Uh, fit yeah. transform also for train x and also train y. Yeah. But good question. Here you are not passing anything there. We are passing. We are passing. Give me one second. You can see uh, this, right? On the polynomial features, on the train set, we are doing fit transform. So the grid set CV, what it will do is, it will it will know whether this is a transformer or a predictor. Okay, there are there are two differences, the two two difference difference between. I'll show you API in a moment, right? There are two kinds of classes: transformers and predictors. The grid set CV knows which one is transformer and which one is predictor. Okay, here uh, when we created grid set CV, I passed a pipeline. The sequence of steps, the parameters, the sequence need to be taken, the cross validation it should be looking at, it should be doing, and the score, the error metric it should be looking at. Okay, this is just the definition. We defined the process of finding the best model, you know, model selection, right? We defined the model selection. And now we are fitting it. Now while fitting, we are passing the X train and Y train. Your question answered? Yes, yes. Okay. Right? While fitting it, we are actually passing the values. And the next point is when to do fit transform, when, when to do fit, when to do predict, it will know by the need, by the type of the class. Polynomial features is a transformer. Linear regression is a predictor. When you say fit right. On the transformer, it will do fit transform. On the predictor, it will do fit. When you do, even though you are calling one method here, the internal implementation is in such a way that the grid set CV will call fit transform on the predict transformer. On linear regression, it will do fit. It's cool, right? If you know which one is transformer, which one is predictor, you can do. If it is a predictor, if the method is fit, Inside fit method, you write, you call fit transform. If it is a try, you know, the, it's a predictor. Sorry, it's a transformer. Sorry. If it is a predictor, if it is fit, you just call fit like that. The code was written. Okay, clear, right? Yeah, you said that you can write the custom one also, right? Uh, uh, I'll explain. Custom one, we will. I'll explain. Don't uh, do okay. it. Okay, then how it uh, like it would recognize that whether it is like. I'll uh, show. I'll uh, show. I'll show in a moment. Yeah, okay. which one? So when you build a custom, build custom one, right? How will it recognize? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, 
in most of the batches right when i am talking about the grid set cvn pipeline people were unable to understand so i took out that code all together <laughs> so so i'll show you the old code i, I have the old uh, classes code and i'll show you that <coughs> and you can also write you can also write that it's not, it's not a big deal it's a simple thing so okay so grid set cv you understood right but ultimately when you run this particular code part right it will find out and give the best model let me run this Maybe screen will take some time, but you know. See that you can see the screen now, right? I ran it and I found that degree three is the best model. Okay, best estimator is the um, uh, attribute in uh, grid set CV class. Which actually holds the best model. How did you, how did it got to know is it the best model? Low minimal uh, R square score, right? Maximal you no know, maximum R square scores on the train set and cross validation, and gap between them is minimal. Okay. Now when I try to you know test it on the train set, it is giving me 98 percent accuracy. Okay. So let us look at the polynomial features class. And linear regression class. Okay, so now I am trying to show you the difference between transformer and the predictor. So if you look at uh, the small level features and look at the source. Okay. See this here, this class definition. You can see the screen, right? Polynomial features, can you see? Yes, sir. But can you please zoom a bit? Right? Good. Yeah. So here, right, polynomial features is inheriting transformer mixing and then base estimator. Okay. On the linear regression, you know, multi output mixing, regression mixing, and then linear model, right? So based on the parent classes, it will understand. Based on the parent classes, which type it is, it will understand. Whether it is a of this linear model, there will be a predictor on top. Okay. So transformer mixing is what actually you know defines this this class as a trans you know transformer. In this transformer mixing, right, there will be fit method, there will be fit transform method, there will be transform method. The implementation will actually take the parameters from the child class. So all the transformers will extend the transformer mixing. All the estimators, right? They'll they they'll they'll extend the estim base estimator. One of these classes will have base estimator. Let me try to see linear model. You look at API, right? You will understand. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am not getting that API there. Linear, linear model API. Yeah, so you can look at the API. You will understand. Okay, basically by you guys know Java, right? In Java, there will be marker interfaces, right? Do you remember marker interfaces in Java? Serializable. Serializable is a marker marker mark, marker interface, right? It mark it 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 you know, denotes that 
a particular class is serializable right until and unless you you inherit serializable class you cannot actually save the object into disk or transmit in it uh, in the network do you remember that anybody from java no so like that it is okay that's fine so the polynomial features and uh, you know you you got the gist right uh, any question there on the parent class thing are we good yes sir so we need to follow the certain order here like right uh, first we need to give the transformer after that we need to give the predictor yes yes okay the same thing right whatever you did here the same thing same. i am doing there here also we are doing transformation first and then predicting model what is transformation we are you know the categorical to numerical numerical conversion imputing nulls though they they also come under transformations only yeah okay we did not include them in pipeline that's it we can include if you want if you create a transformer custom transformer you can include it here got it okay okay so now on the test set we are applying right when we apply on the test set on the grid set cv right with the best model we are predicting right so when you predict right on the grid set cv use uh, the, the the best model and predict the transformations will automatically happen this pipeline will be called automatically see this here the polynomial feature okay so here the polynomial features are are the only thing even if you add the custom transformer also right when you do predict right it automatically converts the code the the the, the data into the format you want right? and then it will make the predictions okay let me try to see one thing here no if you, there is one more uh, there is one more concept in this grid set cv let me try to go there in the api and then show me show you let it let me show you <coughs> so estimator is the predictor param grid is the set of values you want to pass scoring is the mechanism where it need to look into so there is a there is a way which actually holds the best model refit okay refit true refit an estimator using the best found parameters so ultimately right if you see here right what's happening in the grid set cv it is actually taking one building a model two building a model three building a model four building like that if you give 100 numbers here right it will be building 100 models okay but should it hold the best model or not this parameter will define refit is equal to true by default it is true right if you say refit is equal to true right it will hold the best model you know for multiple metric evaluations uh, it needs uh, uh, to be a string uh, denoted uh, multiple ev one evaluation we are using so you can use multiple evaluations also what is evaluation r square score we use right so we can use multiple r square and other rmsc and all that so it look into it will do the cross validation and look at multiple evaluations also where there are uh, considerations or uh, other than maximum score is uh, chosen best estimator if it can be set uh, to a function with which returns the selected best index cv results best estimators best params right? okay so when it, when this is true right the best estimator will give work and the best estimator dot predict will automatically apply the transformations and build the model okay that is the use so if you use the pipeline and grid set cv right lots of code will reduce lots lots of redundant code will reduce so here we were actually doing the transformation here and again here and all that right that that whole thing will reduce i did not implement it here but i'll show you how to do it you know using custom transformers okay so the on the test set also i implemented so this is code modelization class 
and even if you don't understand this and are able to do it that's fine just try to know how to use the grid set cv because we are going to use grid set cv in many places okay any questions apart from custom transformer i'll explain custom transformer now any questions did i do this here in this class no here also i did not do i am just checking whether i did this custom transformer thing in this in this class or not in this code no i did not do it so let me show you from the old code right it will be a bit confusing but don't get confused so this is on another data set okay this is on another data set so here right i wrote everything in functions okay but if we if i want to you know transform it into a transformer right see this here so fill any and clean up that is one activity right fill any and clean up is one activity do you agree one transformational activity before we build a model right so suppose that there is lots of code that is actually doing fill fill any and clean clean up activity right so you can actually take a class and inherit base estimator and transform mix in you 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 do this you know the overriding right you call it as overriding so you yeah that to the parent class right transform mix in has got a fit transform methods i am overriding them let me try to implement it why why am i actually trying to explain it on a on a different so let us take time and you know implement this let me copy this and uh, paste it here maybe i'll take a copy of this class right bear with me three four um oh sorry not this one give me one sec there is delete give me one sec okay let us implement let us implement it right away custom transformer i'll implement it show no questions right yeah clear sir Well, let me try to convert this code into a custom transformer code okay so 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 far we have seen this as a you know plain code right so pre processing code i am going to convert it into custom transformer code oh right transform you see Mm -hmm. first i need to split it and then pass okay first i need to split the data and then pass so right here what am i doing uh x dot loc right this function also i should move it inside the class Fill in the name. Sorry. 
Mm, and the train set, I need to find these values and keep them aside. And then they are global variables, so I will be using them. I will be imputing them here. Right. Okay. It is a shortcut to change everything in this way. I forgot. Anywhere, do you see any place train, train X? We need to convert it to X. Last length. Ah, train set X. Is the train X a data frame? Okay, this is a new class, right? Okay, so here, how will happen? It will actually call self dot, right? Self dot. Self dot. Give me one second. Okay, so this is actually the custom transformer, but uh, here I think uh, this uh, code conversion, this uh, um, okay, at least. Ah, uh, we can actually do that, right? We can actually do that. I think we should put this outside only. Let us not mess with that because it's going to add more complexity. We need to add the you no know, init class and all that. If it's not working, then we'll do it. Okay. So all the values which are used in both train set and test set, I kept them aside, right? And all the code that actually is converting, I kept into a transformer. Yeah. So, okay, that's good. So fill in here and clean up, I'll call you. Okay, so let us try, let us run this code and see. Let me restart the kernel. Okay, so far good. Right now, let us run this. Uh. 
I think I did something in that. Yeah, fill in your drop. Okay. Yeah, the class after many you provided after lost something. Where it is coming from? I think it's going the same at all. The front press, lost front. Okay. It, front this one. Yeah, this, right? yeah, this one. What I did, I didn't get it. Yeah, can you go to the transform class uh, method? In the okay. See here, you take that to value x dot mean value. After that, here, if you see that, lot frontage, right? Lot frontage. That, oh, that oh is not yes, not yes. okay. okay. Uh, how did I get that? Uh? That's the, you okay. took from the uh, pre code already. In okay, previous. okay, previous code. Okay, okay. Yes. I think I need to copy our code, right? So, yeah. Yeah, good point. This code, right? Okay, that code only. That part. Oh, this one, this particular, this one is extra, I think. Rest is all good, right? Yeah, rest is all good. Uh, miss, uh, yeah, all fields yeah, are rest good. is all good. Lines of code and that one, that one line was extra. Okay. I forgot to remove. Throwing around. Uh, drop something. Employee number already dropped, I think. Yeah, maybe we can put a condition over there. No, I did not. I actually took the employee number at least, you know, at all in this X, right? So I can comment this out. So in the train X, right? I don't have employee number. Maybe that's the. At the heck, man. What? These are warnings. These are all warnings. Cat that coach is doing some warnings. Let us look at. Let us look at the warnings. Using LOC, right? Uh, Boolean series key will be re indexed to match data frame index. Okay. Huh. There's some problem with this. This one. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think here lines of code X of prime set or X of four. Ah, yes. Yes, that is that. This is the problem. Um, is the problem. Yes, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Let me look at the original code. X of X of whatever. X of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Am, we are looking into the different uh, data frames, right? That's where it is actually throwing error. This is good. Taking time, but you know, still, maybe somewhere we have. X of X of the value is trying to be set uh, on the copy of the slice of the data frame. Ah, uh, this is the problem. It's, uh, Right. When you do the data frame, you know, manipulations inside the method, right? 
sometimes throw this error because maybe we should actually set that value and then passing it hmm. Actually, I think face it when I was doing some experiments. Sir. So somehow. Uh, sometimes it comes. When, when data is used, uh, maybe during that time. No, not data used. And it's about the reference, uh, the you know, the variable reference uh, issue. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so we look into that later. You know, that warning is not going to cause any harm. I'll fix that and send, you know, maybe send the file to you. Right. So this is you now we actually kept all the transformational code also into a custom transformer and using that as a pipeline here right now on the test set rest estimator we got and on the test set right no need to apply this transformations these transformations i can comment out and you know let me do that too. x test is not defined okay sorry there's x test here that it's automatically working right automatically transformations are applied even though i did not apply here because of the transformer you know the pipeline the transformer got applied this is custom if you want to add everything into a pipeline right you need to convert into transformer you, you can do everything as a method also you know you can write you can put everything into a function then inside function also you can manipulate Got the difference or, you know, did you understood how to actually add it into a custom transformer? I look into the warnings, but you know, is this clear? Yes. Yeah, have, when you have a look at it, right, you'll get more clarity. Okay. So, you know, I'll say this is you know, the kind of we'll stop class here and I'll correct these warnings and send you. Okay.